This video, in this video, I walk through the overall architecture of the Earl Boyd's project. It's a simple project, so this shouldn't take long. But of course it will, because I said that. Okay, so I've covered some of this in my overview, um, but I want to cover um, how these different processes get created and how they communicate with each other. So the first place to start will be the, I guess we could start at the web page. The web page opens up a web socket on this address. The um, application module sets up the cowboy routing, which listens for anything on that animate path and sets up the animate web socket handler. Web socket handler sets itself up with this um, upgrade when web. Uh, when cowboy calls in it, it says upgrade to cowboy web socket and then sets itself up as a web socket. And when it starts, it actually calls supervisor start child in the Earl Boyd's um, supervisor. That will kick off the uh, animate gen server using its public API start gen server call and no uh, empty list as its only argument. And it's a simple one for one. Uh, simple one for one child spec, which means that you can keep generating these and then supervisor will send you back the PID and it'll restart them if they die and it'll restart them with the same arguments that you send in. Because uh, a simple one for one, when you call start child with supervisor, it'll add whatever you pass in that call to whatever you've specified the, the, the static list of arguments. So supervisor starts that up, that's the animate URL. And so it has this start gen server public function, which calls start link on itself with the PID that you specify at runtime. That'll call init with animate web socket. And that one um, sends back to the um, sends back to the web socket its PID, but we don't need to do that. I could just get it from the supervisor colon start child call. And that's the initialize. And then, so this is going to listen for calls. Well, actually, it doesn't listen. It just logs those out to the console. But it's going to listen for casts. It's going to listen for a start cast. It's going to listen for um, a stop cast. And it's going to listen for height and width. So start, it fires up the uh, heat map. And it fires up um, a bunch of Boyd processes. So these are going to be the autonomous objects that, that move around and draw themselves and the heat map will track where they are and how much heat, what spaces have been most popular. Um, and it radiates heat out from each void. So that starts up the voids and the radiating heat and it also starts out, it should probably start a buffer. I'm not sure where the buffer gets started. Uh, so, oh here we go, spawn a buffer. So heat map is a gen server, but buffer is just a process. So let's look at the buffer. And buffer is really simple. It just receives, and if it gets um, an object in, it stores it. And then if it gets this periodic send call, it sends it out. And then heat map, I have videos on all of these. Heat map uh, receives uh, when voids insert themselves, or they move, or they um, ask for the heat around themselves, or they ask for uh, the... Um, uh, heat map to be rendered. So the, the animated controller will ask for the heat map to render itself, whereas Boyd's will insert themselves, move themselves, and ask for the heat around themselves. And I'm not sure if anybody actually calls heat map. I'll have to check that. So then there's the Boyd's themselves, and they have some, they have a public API to generate their state, they start up, and then they move themselves, and they redraw themselves, they send themselves to the buffer, and they tell the heat map where they've moved. And then we have a shape module that I've gone over in another video that just allows uh, the heat map and the voids to generate shape um, lists, lists of tuples, property lists that will be sent to JSON to be encoded and sent to the web socket. So back at the web socket, it actually listens for these objects uh, right here. And then, um, or no, sorry, uh, no, that's the right here web page here, it listens for these messages, and if it's a JSON object starting with this, I should probably put in a better way of um, figuring out if it's a JSON object, and it just draws it, um, and then drawing parses that JSON object, takes all those drawing objects and draws them out. So that's an overview of how this all hangs together.